So today we're going to talk about a new topic. It's called The Laws of Human Nature. And it's a, it's a, a book by a guy called Robert Greene. And it's a wonderful book and it shows us a lot about people, about ourselves, about the way that human beings are. And so we're going to cover, there's many chapters in this book and each chapter talks about a law. And so today we're going to start with the first one, which is the law of irrationality. This is a very interesting one. He begins the book with this topic. Oh, um, I need to choose someone who's going to help me with the translation. Hmm. Okay, let's start with Irene. Irene, are you listening? Okay, all right, help me out with the first part. So, the law of irrationality. <sighs> he begins this chapter by saying that as human beings, we think that we are rational, but actually, we are more emotional and very often our emotional side will prevent our rational side from allowing us to make good decisions. Irene? Yes. Can you translate just a small introduction? Uh, the laws of irrationality. Um,这个的意思是非非理性规律，然后Bob就讲到，呃，我们通常情况下认为我们是理性的，实际上我们是更感性的，然后这是一个简单的引言。嗯，没错。Okay, okay. So later in this presentation, we're going to look at the different parts of the brain and where emotions come from and what's the purpose and also which part of the brain controlled rationality and why is it that there is this there is this huge imbalance between decisions that we make because of our emotions and decisions that we make because of our rational thinking so let's start with the first law I will read it. People think they are rational, but they are often dominated by their emotions. To be dominated means to be controlled. Emotions are more powerful than their rational minds. And they behave irrationally without realizing it. This is the source of bad decisions and negative patterns in life. So just a little bit here, right? We have, we have to make decisions. We are always presented with opportunities to make decisions. And we like to think that, yes, I have a rational mind. I'm a human being, I'm intelligent, and I will consider things carefully. I will look at the past, I will look at the future, I will think about the advantages and the disadvantages, and then I will make my decisions. But in reality, our emotions often have more power or more control over 
what we do. Our rational mind only works when we have control of our emotions. And emotions are almost impossible to control. So later, we're going to look at what are some ways to learn how to be rational. And very often when we make bad decisions, we, we have different ways of, of dealing with these bad decisions. Later on, we're also going to look at these things called biases, which, is, which are the, the things that we use to make rational decisions. We think are rational, but they are actually little programs that run in our brains that don't always help us to make good decisions. And because we are so concerned by our emotion, we're so, so concerned with our emotions, we're so controlled by our emotions, we don't even realize that we have these patterns, we have these things that we are repeating over and over and over again. We have these decisions that we are making, these things we are doing again and again and again. Irene. <咳>这里的话不就是讲这个普遍规律下面就是嗯人们认为他们是理性的但实际上他们经常会被嗯一些情感所控制然后表现出来就是哦在没有意识到就是他们是嗯受情感控制的情况下表现出来就是嗯就
this new part. The new part allowed us to consider things more carefully, to think, okay, well, I, I, did, I heard a sound. Now, rationally, there can't be anyone around me. Maybe it was the wind. Maybe it was a bird. I can, I can think about it a little bit. I can, I can first consider what are the possibilities that it is someone or something dangerous. What, is it, what are the possibilities that it's something or someone who wants to harm me? But the first thing that comes up is always the emotion. The emotion comes up and I pay more attention and I have to decide, what should I do? Irene. Um,就是刚刚Bob举了一个例子,就是说,呃,想象你,想象一下你自,呃,走在自己一个人走在路上,然后你听到了一个很奇怪的声音,然后你就可能你的,呃,你就会瞬间感,感到,就会突然感到害
就是呃，我们感受到这种。嗯、呃，这种 fear， 这种消极的情感，我们感受到了害怕，但是就是，嗯，到底就是什么是什么是 fear， 什么是害怕？然后 Bob 就解释了，就是、嗯、fear 的话呢，就是其中一种呃情感，让我们就是嗯，就触发我们在这种情感下面的一个。呃，行为，但是，嗯，通常情况下，就是情感并，嗯、呃，并不能，嗯、呃，让我们及时就是做出一些正确的一些一些反应。就简单来说，就是，嗯，动物的话，它可能碰到这个就是害怕的一些东西，它可能就会，嗯、呃，立就是。呃，立刻反应，然后，嗯、呃，就是做出那种战斗的那种状态。但是人类就不一样，就是我们有一个能力，就是说让自己就是，嗯 ，slow down， 就是，嗯、呃，应该是慢下来，就是，嗯，去决定，呃，接下来该怎么做。但是实际上呢，就是做做这个。针对这个情感，我们做选择，就是选择，呃，做出什么样的行为，这这不是一个非常简单的一个过程，就我们不会像动物一样马上就做出了反应，但是我们就需要一段时间缓冲，然后选择一个一个合适的，就对我们来说一个合适的一个行为，然后去去去去，然后去怎么说，就是继续去，嗯，嗯、呃。因为这个这个这个情感，然后采取一些行动，对 ，That's all。OK。All right. So I want to talk about an interesting example from the book. It's a great book, by the way. Robert Greene wrote this book. I believe he wrote it last year. It's quite a new book, and it's wonderful. It really, really helps people to understand. A lot about themselves and also just about other people around them. Human nature.、Um, so let's、um, let's try someone else here.、Um, Melanie, are you listening? Yes. Okay. Help me with the next one. This example. So, in the book, there's a very very nice example about Athens. Athens is、um, it's a it's a Greek state. It's an ancient Greek state. So, in 400 BC, around 400 BC. This state, Athens, was a very beautiful and a very powerful nation, and there were many other nation nations in ancient Greece. And in this story, he talks about these two countries or these two nations, Athens and Sparta. Athens was a very it was like the cultural capital of Greece at that time. And Sparta was more of a, a military nation. They were they had very very powerful soldiers. They were a small nation, but they had very powerful soldiers. Athens was much larger, and it had a lot more trade. Its economy was stronger. And around that time, there was an agreement of peace between these two nations. But one day, some soldiers from Sparta came to Athens, and they said that well, they they decided that they wanted Athens to give them、uh, like a like a tax. They wanted Athens to basically they wanted to start a war with Athens for for some reason. They wanted.、Uh, Maybe some money from Athens, or they wanted some land. I'm I'm not very sure about the reason, but they decided that they wanted that the two nations were not going to maintain the peace agreement. And there was a huge meeting after the after the people in Athens heard this. They were they had a huge meeting to decide what to do if they. If they decided to have this war with Sparta, it might 
it might really, really affect their economy and their way of life. At the end of this war, one of those nations was really going to suffer and it would not be good for either one. So the people in Athens had this meeting and they were trying to decide what to do. If they gave, the, if they gave more money to, the, to people from Sparta as, as they wanted, it might make the people of Sparta more courageous and they might decide that they will ask for more money and more money. And so giving them more money was one option. It might not have been the best option. Going to war was another option. And again, they were trying to decide what to do. And at that time, there was this man, his name was Pericles. And Pericles was a very wise man. He, he at the time, he was the leader of Athens. And he was in this meeting and he waited to listen to many people speak. And finally, he decided to give his opinion. And everybody became quiet and they listened because his opinion usually was very rational. I'll, I'll pause here. Melanie, can you translate so far? Okay. So, this is the first thing. There are two countries. One is called A country, the other is called S country. And it's in 400 BC. The two countries. It's one A country, it's very big, and there are many strong soldiers. 嗯，但是可能并没有那么没有 S 国家那么富裕。S 国家很小，但是它很富裕，所以就有更多的资源。呃，然后呢，突然有一天 ，S 国家的人过去跟 A 国家的人说：“嗯，如果你不给我们多少多少钱，我们就会进攻你，我们就要打仗。”然后之后 A 国家的人就开会去了。然后他们开会的时候讨论有两种，呃，结果。第一种是，如果他们打仗了，那么对双方都不好，因为他们的国土会受到破坏，然后人力以及人民的生活都会受到很大的影响。所以这是两者都不会带来更多好处的。但是第二种选择，如果他给。他们给了 S 国家钱，那么将来 S 国家就会要更多的钱，于是那可能这个国家就会破产了，然后就更穷，然后也是不好的结果。于是有个人叫 I don't know how to um read his name Pericles. 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 就是这个叫 Pericles 的人，他。是这个 A 国家一个算是领导级的人物，然后他非常聪明，于是他先是收集了各大民众的意见，然后经过他的思考，他决定要给出自己的意见。于是当他要给给出自己的意见时，其他人都是不出声的，因为他们觉得他给的意见是很理性的、很理智的。OK。So <clears throat> Pericles decided that to go to war with this other nation would not be a rational decision because the emotions of the people, they were, they were very angry, they were very afraid, and going to war would be an irrational decision because it would be made just because of those emotions. He decided, after really considering things very carefully, he decided that it would be better not to go to war to Spar with Sparta because if they did that, they would probably lose. Athens was a powerful nation but their, their soldiers were not as strong as Sparta. And 
So what he decided to do was to make the rational decision to close the country, to bring everybody into the walled city and to close the walled city to protect everyone. Now, there was land outside the walled city that a lot of people from Athens lived in and he told those people, leave your land, leave your homes and come into the walled city. We will close the gates and everybody will be safe. This way, if the people from Athens, I sorry, if the people from Sparta attack us, they will, maybe they will destroy the land, maybe they will destroy your homes, but you will be safe inside the walls. And on the other side of the walls, we have ships. The people from Sparta do not use ships to fight. We can use our ships to slowly attack their land. And because they will not win, because they cannot kill us and win because of our walls, this war will slowly go on and they will become very, very frustrated and eventually they will give up. Now, the people in Athens heard his idea and many people were not happy because they thought, we are, why are we hiding? We are hiding from these people. Again, it was, it was fear and anger that, dis, that, that made them feel that the people from Athens were, were hiding. They were, they were not being brave. And the people who wanted peace also thought, okay, well, we should hide, but then why are we going to attack them with our ships? We are kind of we are having a war with them, but we are also hiding. What, what is, they didn't understand the decision, but most people just thought, okay, you know what? We, we should just agree with him because it seems that he is trying to do both strategies. He's trying to both protect us and also attack Sparta. And it's possible that if this goes on for one year or two years or three years, the war will end and everything can go back to normal. Melanie. Okay, so you guys have a different sense of voice. It's just a good part of the shipping may have much hand up or think so. It's a good shipping guns hand up in one hand up. So you know, the girl has home in the room, sing he the room, don't show. 首先如果我们之间去跟他们打仗之类的都是不理智的所以他觉得需要小心的思考而且并不能去打仗你等等我的脾气好的然后接下来就是因为如果我们打仗的话我们一定会输因为我们的士兵并没有S国那么强大然后
，就不会造成太大的人力以及资源的伤亡。OK，OK、okay. okay.。So the plan. So that was the plan. Everybody moved into the walled city. They left the things outside, and the war began. The people from Sparta came. They destroyed the houses and the land outside the walled city. And in the first few months, the people of Athens were very unhappy because they saw their houses and their land and everything being destroyed. But slowly, after a few months, things started to quiet down. The ships that Athens sent to some of Sparta's land slowly started to affect Sparta. They affected the food that the Spartan people could get from those lands. They affected the economy of Sparta. And slowly, as the months went by. It was looking like Pericles' plan was a good plan. Slowly, everything was going according to his plan, and they just had to wait one or two more years. But unfortunately, because there were so many people living inside the walled city, there was. Kind of like a virus, a virus, because people threw trash, because there were too many people close together. People started to get sick, and this virus spread from from the people, from from a few people to more and more and more and more, and many people died very quickly. Pericles was also one of those people who got. This virus, and he died. And after he died, the people of Athens blamed him. They thought that he was a stupid old man, and his plan was was not good. And because of him, people died. And so they decided, and they got, of course, angry. Their emotions. Got the better of them. They did not want to think rationally anymore, and so they decided we're just going to have a real war with Sparta. They opened up their walled cities, and they sent their soldiers to Athens. I'm、oh, sorry. They sent their soldiers to Sparta, and one thing led to another, and eventually. They lost the war. Melody. So, next, A people then moved into this strong walled city to live in peace. So, in the first few weeks, they were very unhappy because they saw that the people of Sparta were always fighting. 摧毁他们的家园、他们的房子以及地盘，但是他们又无能为力。但是呢，渐渐的几个月过去了，他们发现他们有，嗯，他们是安全的，然后也可以正常的进行生活。之后他们就会认，他们就认为这个计划是好的，因为一切都像这位姓批的男士所所计划的一样。发展了下去，他们所需要做的只是等那么一两年，然后等一切都恢复平静，然后出出去住回去嘛。然后，嗯，但是渐渐的，这个城市里的人越来越多，于是突然有一天，有一种病毒还是对病毒来了，然后在这种人群密集的城市里，人传人。而且这个姓皮的人，他就是这个很聪明的人，他也是有其中一位受害者，然后他就死了，然后，然后其他的市民就很生气，就怪他，怪这个姓皮的人说他的这个计划是很不好的
，让很多人死了。于是他们的情绪就占据了他们大脑。当情绪占据大脑的时候，他们很冲动，于是就决定发起一场真的战争。嗯，后来他们就真的把士兵派去了 S 国去打仗，所以结果就跟预计的一样，他们输了，很惨，后来就没有。Okay. This example is kind of interesting because when we look at the history of Athens of this nation, they used to have leaders for one year or two years or three years. And the leaders were often not very rational people. They were the kind of people who liked to fight, who liked war. They made their decisions because of their emotions, and so they quickly became、um, powerful, and they also quickly lost their power. And this was the history of this nation. But Pericles, this man, when he became the leader, he used rationality. He was. One of the most rational leaders, and he made such amazing decisions for that nation. He allowed that nation to develop; their economy improved and continued to improve for many years. He was very interested in art, and and he he asked many of the builders, the workmen of the city, to build beautiful structures, beautiful buildings in the city, and. Because he was such a rational person, and because he really improved the economy, he was probably the only leader of this nation. He was the only leader to last years and years and years, probably more than twenty or thirty years as that nation's leader. It's just really unfortunate that because of that virus and because he died, they. The people, the the people of Athens, forgot about all of those decisions, all of those great things that he did for the nation, and they decided not to follow through with his original plan to just keep everybody in the walled city and wait for the war to end. Melanie. Hmm. 所以刚才讲到他们输了那场战争之后，就输得很惨，然后就说这一个历史事件其实非常的有趣，因为这个这个名字好难读啊，就是这个姓皮的人，他是这个王国里嗯非常理智的一位 leader 领导或者是。就领导人，但是以前的领导人，他们经常都是被情绪所占据，然后不懂得如何做理智的决定，而他是很懂得如何理智判断以及呃果断做做决定的嘛，所以他做了很多年，差不多有二十到三十年，一直都在当领导，但是只是因为这一次他被这个病毒感染之后死掉了。然后所有的市民就忘记他曾哦对，中间有讲到，我不就有讲到这个领导他带领了这个王国，嗯的那个经济变得很好，然后嗯，然后也建造了很多非常棒的房房屋以及基础设施，然后就就反正就是让这个国家变得非常好，但只是因为他死掉了，然后。当这些人民他们的情绪上来之后，就把把他之前做的所有这些好的决定都给忘掉了，然后选择不去听从他之前所说的这个决定，就是全部都大家都要一直保留在那个有墙的王那个城市里，而是直接出去打仗，所以他们就不能。不选择继续留在那里面，然后等待，然后等待最后一切恢复平静再出去，而是做出了这样的决定，直接去打仗，最后大家都会输得很惨。OK。All right. Okay. 